Yeah, very good. Welcome to Yellow Brick. Neil, this is amazing. Thanks for having me at Yellow Brick. Uh, what do we do today? Well, let's, we can go and start looking at some art and some interesting things if you like. Um, yeah. This car here was a collaboration we did with uh, BMW iVentures when they invested in, uh, in Yellow Brick. That's it's, uh, awesome. Yep, it's really cool. We've got yeah. a, another art collaboration on the wall here with a Danish uh, art deco artist called Mads Berg. It's actually quite a famous chap. We uh, worked with a, we collaborated with him to uh, design this with a San Francisco background just for something for the uh, employee cool. cafeteria here. Yeah. And uh, over here, uh, we have another really interesting piece of uh, comic artwork with uh, um, a chap from Beijing called uh, wow. Berlin uh, Plastered. And he uh, designed this for us as well. This is from oh, the uh, olden days of business. Those were actually racks of servers and things being destroyed by a yellow brick hero. But uh, you know, the world's moved on from that a little bit now. <laughs> we don't really think about racks of servers anymore. But this is awesome, yeah. Yep. Good team that you have in a wonderful office. Uh, Thank you. Are we doing interviews outdoors today? Yes, we'll go out in the sun. Uh, yes. Hence I got my hat on so I don't burn. But um, Let's yeah. do it. All right. Awesome. Thank you everyone. All right, welcome to The Robert Show. We are here at the headquarters of Yellow Break uh, with this founder and CEO of Neil Carson. Great to be uh, here, thank you. Welcome to The Robert Show. I'm so excited to chat about uh, Yellow Break, what you guys are doing in this space, and uh, also want to learn a little about why does this space need another data warehouse vendor. Would you like to share something? Sure, thanks, Revit. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Yellowbrick. I uh, started the company just under 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, founding engineers, along with my co-founder, Mark, uh, wrote a lot of the code in the early days. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, more intelligent people have replaced all of that now. Yeah. But uh, still uh, maintain an active technical interest in things going on here, as well as uh, helping run the show. So uh, thank you for having me. This is awesome. I've seen Yellowbrick uh, since a while. I've been connected with the team for more than uh, two years now, I guess. Uh, but I wanted to learn about why Skubernet is so important to your architectural vision. Uh, can you tell us about that? Uh, because that would be super helpful for our audience. Sure, and it ties in a little bit to your question as to why does the world need another data warehouse at the right. end of the day. And philosophically, there's a couple of ways you can build applications. Now, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, in the very older days, we built applications by putting servers in data centers and building up databases and web tiers and writing apps that worked end-to-end -end that way and you'd sort of co-locate the database and the web server and everything together. Right. Then as things became more sassy, this stuff started to get decoupled. Mm -hmm. People would run more things in different clouds and applications would be built consuming different SaaS services at the end of the day. So perhaps, you know, some of your data would live in one vendor's application, some in another vendor's application, uh, and your application would be composed of multiple SaaS platforms. Now, there's sort of a movement in application development going on called you know, cloud native applications. Obviously that can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. But you know, Kubernetes is growing massively in popularity because people are building more and more applications in a cloud native fashion, meaning using microservices to allow portable apps to run across any cloud. And previously, as people have built out these applications, most of the focus within the Kubernetes community has been on app building, the application tier. Mm. Kubernetes hasn't had much to do with the data tier of these applications. The data tier still lives in some cloud vendor or lifted and shifted somewhere else or in a different SaaS vendor. Um, now, philosophically, we think that applications and data should be together. They mm -hmm. should scale together. They should be managed together, deployed together, uh, monitored together. And, you know, there aren't really a whole lot of choices for, hey, I've got analytics that I want to do on data and I want something that integrates well with cloud native Kubernetes applications. And that's the gap that we're plugging here. Mm. So that's why we think the world needs another data warehouse. Not all of the world will want it, but some decent fraction of the world we think will. Yeah. And uh, talking about that, uh, just since we are on this topic, I would also love to know a little about uh, which are these companies that are actually using it. Uh, would you like to share any use case that you have in mind or the names of the companies? Yeah, we'd be happy to talk about a few, actually. I mean, yeah. traditionally, our business at Yellowbrick is mostly large enterprise companies. Right. Um, you know, it's uh, the key verticals we uh, have customers in are financial services, insurance, mm -hmm. telecommunications, payments, uh, and the federal government and uh, international governments as well. Uh, right. They don't really let me talk much about the government ones because yep. uh, I'm not an American. And uh, last time I went to visit a government customer, they had to have a dog follow me everywhere <laughs> and even wait for me outside the washroom. So, um, but we have some public government customers. Uh, a recent one, for example, is uh, yep. the U.S. Navy. Uh, nice. Yellowbrick uh, does the analytics for the supply chain for the U.S. Navy. We're running those big data warehouses. 
That was uh, a business we ran with a local partner called uh, JMA, and uh, the Navy, like many folks, was on a cloud journey. Yeah. They needed a data warehouse they could start with on-premises, running, and have a painless migration path to the cloud without needing to hire loads of people or consultants to rewrite things or, or, or move logic over. Yellowbrick plugged that gap perfectly. We were compatible with the product they had before, and they're in the process of uh, moving to GovCloud right now. Okay, that's a pretty good use case that you've shared. Uh, also with government, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of uh, you know restrictions that come into the place as well. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you guys are uh, on it because you've been working with a lot of governments, not only just in the US, but also in the UK. Uh, actually, not in the UK yet. Okay. But if you have some contacts in the UK government, we would love to talk to them. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, definitely you guys are expanding quite a bit. So that's awesome. Also quickly want to uh, ask a little about, you know, obviously there are other vendors as well, like Redshift, Google, mm -hmm. Snowflake. How do you compete against them? It's a really competitive market. Yeah. I mean, of all the things that you could go and choose to build when doing a startup, you know, you take some of the most complicated scale-out software, and we do that for big businesses that require reliability and 24-7, 365 uptimes and all of this sort of stuff. And you do that then in a way that's not coupled to infrastructure, that's portable across all the different clouds, right. that's supported geographically. I mean, it's one of the most difficult things you can possibly do. So not only do you do that, but you're selling it into a market where you know, the world's biggest software IPO, Snowflake, happened. Exactly. Uh, where Databricks and Snowflake are fighting it out, and they're <laughs> sucking all of the air out of the room as well. So the honest answer is it is actually quite hard to compete with all these vendors. But um, we have some unique things about our software that yeah. none of the other products you talked about have. One, we run in any cloud. Two, we run in the customer's cloud account, not mm. as an external service. It means we deploy and scale with applications, but it also means customers with concerns around data residency and data sovereignty are perfectly suited to use Yellowbrick um, mm. because um, they get to control where their data goes, how it lives, how it's exposed, how it moves around the world or doesn't. Um, and our offering is, is unique in that sense because we have all the modern performance, scalability, cost effectiveness, plus really catering to these places that care about data residency. And, you know, the way the world is going now, geopolitics, everything else, more and more people are starting to care about where their data is, where their data goes, who can get their eyes on it, and is it allowed to leave my company or leave these borders, or does it have to comply with certain restrictions around the usage of the data? So. We're really well placed there. Mm. We have a far better story than Snowflake or Databricks. And uh, that's what we're focused on right now. Okay, that's pretty interesting insights. Thanks for sharing those, Neil. Uh, also quickly, I uh, want to also know a little about what's next that's coming from Yellowbrick. What can we expect? What, uh, any new announcements? Any secret sauce that you would want to share with our audience? Has to be AI, of course, right? <laughs> I mean, if anyone's talking about doing anything next now, it has to be AI. And we actually... Everyone's laughing at that. Right. Um, yeah, no, it has to be AI that's next. Right. I mean, we continue to port our product to more platforms, win more customers, more users. But I think when we look at the really interesting things that are going on, the integration of the data warehouse, which is where your data is, and how you consume that with AI, how you train AI on that, how you store the results of that training and make that available to large language models and other things is really interesting to us. Mm. So we've actually got some uh, work in prototyping. We've been, uh, sorry. We've actually got some work we've been doing in that space now and some quite innovative things. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just filed for some patents on some of it as well. And I think you're going to see some fairly interesting stuff coming. Can't wait. This is super exciting. Yeah. And uh, thanks for sharing those uh, insights with us. Uh, but it was, again, such a pleasure to have you on The Robert Show. And thanks for inviting me to, uh, you know, your Yellow Break headquarters. Uh, sunny day, perfect day to record a, uh, you know, a podcast with you. But uh, such a pleasure. One last question for our audience. If they want to reach out to you or reach, learn more about Yellow Break, yes. uh, where can they do that? Anyone can reach out to me. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I think awesome. I look like a parrot. And uh, <laughs> my email is neil at yellowbrick.com. Anyone can feel free to reach out. N-E-I-L. Awesome. This is great. Thanks once again, Neil. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching us today. <laughs>